Continuing from last lesson, in this lesson, we're going to learn about the for loop, which is a different way to loop in programming. Uh, go ahead and write your changes and then create a new file called for.py. So the for loop is another looping mechanism, but it functions and is written slightly differently than the while loop. Where the while loop has some explicit boolean condition that it checks every single time, the for loop has a range of numbers or a list of items it works through. So to start with, let's write a for loop that does what our while loop did, which is count up for numbers. The way you write this in a for loop is for n, or whatever you want to call the variable, in range 100 print n. And so now if I write my changes and execute my code, you can see here that it prints the numbers from 0 to 99. Now, notice the differences between the for loop and the while loop. Let me write out the code for the while loop again so we can compare n is equal to 0, while n is less than 100, print n, n plus equals 1, which is shorthand for n is equal to n plus 1. You see here how in the for loop, the n automatically increments for me. I don't have to do anything with it manually. That's because the for loop manages your condition for you. On the other hand, the while loop only cares if the condition is true or false, so you have more control, but on the flip side, you have to manage everything yourself in order to change the condition as you need to. Just like the while loop, the for loop can also have an else clause, so I'm going to add one here, else print done, and that is looping through a range of numbers. Now, the other way to use a for loop is to loop through a set of items. It's hard to fully demonstrate this because we haven't learned about any data structures yet, but let's go ahead and do this with a data type that you know already, which is a string. You see, in many programming languages, a string is actually an array of characters because of how the data is stored in the memory. And so, strings, in many cases, are iterables. In other words, they are data structures where you can iterate through and access individual elements inside. In this case, for a string, that would be characters. So, if I do a loop here, for character or char in hello world, print char, what do you think is going to happen? Well, let's find out. I'm going to change n equal to 100 here so the while loop doesn't execute. I'm going to write these changes and then run the code. And you can see here at the very end, hello world is printed one character at a time. And that's what's neat about the for loop. When you have a set of items or a list of items that you're working through, the for loop will automatically fetch those items individually for you without you having to manually manage the condition or fetch the items individually. And that wraps up this quick lesson on for loops. In the next video, we're going to go over the prompt for your second programming challenge, which will apply some of these new things that you've learned.